Every number has two square roots, three cube roots, four fourth roots, so on and so forth. Every real number actually has n nth roots. So let's see if I can find the two square roots of four. Well, I can do that by solving this equation. x squared is equal to four. If I solve this, I'll find all numbers x whose square is four. So I'll do that. I'll put it in standard form. Factor the left side. Set each factor equal to 0. When I set this factor equal to 0, I get x equal negative 2. Set this factor equal to 0, and I get x equal 2. So here are my two square roots of 4. They are the two real numbers I can square, multiply times themselves, and get 4. So I can see that I could do this with any real number that I want. It's going to be an easy factoring problem. I end up with this. How about the three cube roots of 8? Well, I know one of the cube roots of 8 is 2, because 2 to the third power is going to give me 8. Where are the other two? Well, I can find all of the cube roots of 8 by solving this equation. x cubed is equal to 8. If I can solve that equation, I'll find all the numbers whose cube is equal to 8. So again, standard form, x cubed minus 8 is equal to 0. That's the difference of two cubes, so I'll factor that x minus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals 0. I set this factor equal to 0, and I get x equal 2. I set this factor equal to 0, and I get x is equal to, I'll use the quadratic formula, negative 2 plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a times c, which is 4, all divided by 2 times a, which is just going to be 2. Now all I have left to do is to simplify this square root and see what comes out of this. So negative 2 plus or minus square root of, what do I have? 4 subtract 16. 4 times 1 times 4 is 16, so 4 subtract 16. Negative 12, all divided by 2. So negative 2 plus or minus, okay, square root negative 12, I have a factor of 4, that will come out as 2. I have a negative 1, that will end up being i, and what's left inside there will be square root 3. So 2i square root 3, when I simplify this radical, all divided by 2. Divide the numerator denominator by 2, I can factor that 2 out of the numerator, divide it out with that 2 in the denominator, I get negative 1 plus or minus i square root 3. So here are the three cube roots of 8. One of them is 2, and another one is negative 1 plus i square root 3, and the third one is negative 1 minus i square root 3. So every number has three cube roots. How about fourth roots of 16? I'll do the same thing. x to the fourth is equal to 16. If I can solve that equation, I'll get every number whose, that I can raise to the fourth power to get 16. Standard form, x to the fourth minus 16 is equal to 0. Okay, x to the fourth minus 16 is 2 to the fourth, or, or this is x squared squared, and this is 4 squared. So this looks like the difference of two squares to begin with. It's x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 4 when I factor. This right here I can factor again as x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. And so I'll set each factor equal to 0. I get x equal negative 2, x equal positive 2, and x squared equal negative 4. x squared equal negative 4. I can take the positive and negative square root of both sides of that. When I have the square root of negative 4, I know that's going to be 2i. So I end up here with plus or minus 2i. So here are my four fourth roots of 16. Negative 2, negative 2 to the fourth is 16. 2, 2 to the fourth is 16. Positive 2i, if I take 2i and raise it to the fourth, what do I get? 16. And if I take negative 2i and raise it to the fourth, what do I get? 16. So uh, 16 has four fourth roots, as does every real number. Every real number has four fourth roots. So if I look at just any number I want, like 27, 
two square roots, three cube roots, four fourth roots, five fifth roots, so on and so forth. So we've done a kind of simplified version right here. I picked the numbers out specially so that I could factor them easily. To actually find all the roots of every number, you need a little bit of trigonometry. So when you get to that class, when you take trigonometry, you should look for that part of the class where you find out that every number has n nth roots. The class where you